Hello there, I'm Michelle. Today I will be presenting the words in Arab with my fellow classmates, Nock and Christina. Hitler had suddenly commanded his army to take over Stalingrad in 1942. Even though taking over the city would be a questionable action, the reason for that would be because it was Stalin's city, and Hitler taking over Stalin's city would represent the conflict between two powerful leaders. Throughout three months, German troops went step by step, battling street by street, determined to take over, but the Soviet position remained intact. After the German assault, Soviet officials focused on a counterattack plan called Operation Uranus. The operation was to feed enough soldiers to create forces surrounding the city of Kursk. Because of the Soviets' powerful defense, Germany's response was to be unmotivated. Hitler, however, told them not to retreat and stand fast. Hermann Göring was confident that Hitler's troops could be supplied with only airdrops. This made Hitler confident in his decision not to retreat. In 1943, the Soviets began with their assault against Germany. They had weakened Germany many times, but amazingly, Germany managed to keep its defensive position. Soon after, the Soviet troops began to slither their way through Germany's defenses. The battle between the two sides was intense, and millions of soldiers lost their lives. Finally, the Germans surrendered, and the war was in favor of the Soviet Union on the Eastern Front. This is an image of Stalingrad after the war between the Soviet Union and the German troops. Now that we have covered the Battle of Stalingrad, let's get into the Battle of the Atlantic. The Battle of the Atlantic was the combat between the Americans and the British to keep the vital shipping lanes safe from the Germans. The battle took place in the Atlantic Ocean. In September 1939, German U-boats were only patrolling around Great Britain. U-boats are what the Germans used during the Battle of the Atlantic. Then, on June 1940, they focused more on the Eastern Atlantic. On April 1941, German patrol extended into central and western parts of the Atlantic Ocean. On December 1941, they went off to the coast of the U.S. When it was early 1943, German losses started to rise to a rate of 15 ships every month, which is the number of ships Germany produces per month. Not only that, but British code breakers were mastering at breaking German naval codes. The U.S. and the British later on introduced the B-24. The B-24 is a liberator bomber, which was a deadly force against the Germans. Finally, on May 1943, the Germans concluded that they had lost the Battle of the Atlantic. Now let's talk about the German retreat to the east. Although the Germans weakened the Soviet Union, they did not manage to completely take down the Eastern Front. As a result, the German army arranged an attack for Kursk, a city that was under command of the Soviets. This plan was called Operation Citadel. The purpose for this operation was to fortunately weaken and delay the Union from attacking. The Germans thought they had a perfect strategy, but the Soviets had created a fortification plan, which was planned to protect the city of Kursk. This plan may have slowed the German military down, but soon after, a massive war began. The war between the Soviets and Germans' name was the Battle of Kursk, and it was one of the most grandest battles in history. The two sides had armies composed with hundreds of thousands of men, and a number of artillery pieces and tanks used were in the thousands. Nevertheless, the German force was no match for the Soviet Union. They forced the Germans out of Russia and pushed them into Ukraine. Germany's defensive position was no match for the Soviet military. This is the map of a German assault against the Eastern Front. In the beginning, German armies attempted to attack the, Ger the Soviets on Russian land, but the Soviet military was too overpowered. They forced German troops out of Russia and into Ukraine. These are our resources and image credits. Thank you.